Witch's Hill. Hello and welcome back to Witch's Hill. I'm Pat. I'm Tim. And today we have a special episode because it's my fucking birthday. I'm aging and I'm dying slowly. And you're also out of the 27 Club finally. Yes, finally. I can start using white lighters. But today we're going to talk about some really uh, weird shit that happened in World War II because I was up all night last night playing Call of Duty and I could not sleep. I, I feel like that happens more often than not. It, yes. <laughs> you were about to argue and then said no. Yes, yeah, this is true. This is true. Well, but, we were also joined by Mute Hanky. Hello. Yes, and if you are listening to this on release day, head on over to uh, facebook.com forward slash Witches Hill Radio where you could probably see us right now live. Yes. Yes, and we're going to be talking about other creepy shit there. And then come back and continue playing this episode because you need to listen to this one too because weird shit was going on. A lot of weird shit. But yeah, uh, if you have any inquiries, you can uh, send that all that good stuff to uh, witcheshillradio at gmail.com. And we already talked about going live, so I'm not going to go over that again. Yeah, all right. All right. Yes. We did the thing. Yeah. We did the thing. The thing, the thing has been done. The, it has been done. Now, uh, I'm curious about this episode because you have not shown me any bit of it. No. Like I said, I was up all night last night. I'm like on four hours of sleep. Or something like that. I don't. I don't remember. And then I woke up and wrote this whole episode, and then came over. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's how my mind is processing things right now. Um, <laughs> but before we get into this whole uh, mainly World War II weird shit, there I think there's a couple of uh, other things about like Vietnam and stuff. But I want to start off by uh, telling a story about somebody who I actually used to work with. Oh, it's story time. Yeah, it's a story time. Here at Witches Hill Radio. Yes. Yeah. Story time! Alright, come in the story. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and tell the story! What the fuck is going on? Uh, uh, I used to be a caretaker, and I was taking care of a World War II Navy veteran. And he, he, was, a, he was a badass. And uh, one day he just started telling me about all the things that he had done. Okay. And they, they all vary in... Um, no, I, I won't say that. I'll say that they kind of, like... He started off soft and then just kind of went all full-blown into, like, yeah, this was fucking World War II. But, okay, so he starts off by telling me that he used to be in the Navy, right? Okay. And so... so uh, he was a seaman? Yeah, he was a seaman. And uh, he was on the USS Forrester, which I actually found a picture of on uh, Wikipedia earlier today, just so that way I could get, like, a visual reference of the type of, like, ship he was on. And uh, he... Uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna go into all the specifics and everything, but he told he starts off just by being like, yeah, you know, I was in the navy, I was here, I was there, and then instantly jumps into, yeah, I used to go into the bunkers and the trenches with the flamethrowers with my machine gun and protect them. I'm like, holy fuck, dude! Oh, damn. Yeah, like that's a bit more than just chilling on a ship. Certified badass, right there. Literally, like surviving that you, too. You know what popped into my head for, as like an image? was uh, World at War for Call of Duty back yeah. on the 360. Just that one dude with the fucking Tommy gun just like running up. That's that's my vision, this dude. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, he passed um, two years ago. Uh, actually, that's coming up on the anniversary of that in October. But uh, yeah, yeah, he was really good. G good dude. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. It's just this dude was a fucking badass. Hmm. Well, yeah, and, and very nice. No, you're not a badass. Speaking of badass, there was a squadron of Soviet females that flew planes and they successfully completed 30,000 bombing missions on Nazi soldiers. And so they swooped in and would like, would bomb them and, and restart the plane like, like mid fall. Just some of the most badass shit. It was like, oh, well, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Just straight up Soviet fucking yo yo females just just bombing motherfuckers. That's just nuts. Oh, yeah. Fuck. What were they called? The Night Witches. Fuck yeah. That's a very appropriate name. So badass. Cause well, so they flew at night, and they apparently they struck fear like into soldiers. Like all that they had on them was like a compass and some. Of, like small shit, like minor, minor field supplies. Okay, so just like a yeah, just bare bones. Fuck it, it. Yeah, 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 just straight. They're playing World War Two on hardcore mode. 
<laughs> or no, they're on the planes. They're they're playing Battlefield. That'd be so badass to like see, just like holy shit. Be badass to see, but most likely if you're seeing that, you're getting shot at. Yeah, you're and you're fucked. probably gonna get bombed. Yeah, and you're not gonna be saying that's cool. You're gonna be like, holy shit. Oh my oh, god. No. Oh shiza. And then just run. You know. Oh shiza. Oh, this isn't good. But let's continue on. Uh, there's a lot of creepy shit that happened in World War II that not everybody knows. And actually, I'm. I'm for a loop on a couple of these things because later on, you, I, I'm going to tell you something that Joseph Goebbels fucking did way towards the end of World War II, and it's just like, what the fuck? But before we get to that, we have a bunch of other fun things that we're going to talk about. Fun things? Yeah, so, well, I wouldn't say fun, but definitely mind, mind-bottling and thought-provoking. Mind-fucking? Mind-bottling? Yes, mind-fuckery. Yes. Mind-bottling? M- mind-bottle fuckery. Or your mind's inside of a bottle. Don't go through the minefield, they're gonna blow, blow. Um, but <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna talk about is an article that I actually found on Ranker.com. Uh, and it says, This story comes from Reddit user Igloo444. Their grandfather was a, uh, was a member of the British Army and was stationed in a remote village in the Swiss Alps during the winter of 1943. The village quickly got snowed in, and all telephone lines were out. The roads were blocked, and the, uh, the whole battalion was just was just stuck in the Swift Alps for the entire winter. So, I mean, that, that fucking sucks. That sucks right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, most of the villagers only spoke German, and most of the soldiers... Or, wait, most of the villagers only spoke German, and most of the soldiers only spoke English. So there was kind of like a barrier that they had to overcome. So when the soldiers were out at a local bar one night, and a man began yelling, Where take you the children at them? Um, they were pretty confused, as I would be too. Um, they rounded up a translator and took the man back to the base, where he told them that sen- uh, since their arrival, several small objects had gone missing. A tarp, some wood, a halberd, um, which is similar to an axe, I guess. Um, and then the children started disappearing as well. If it had just been one child, they probably would have written it off as some weird or tragic incident or event. Uh, they were all... <clears throat> They were, after all, stuck in the mountains, surrounded by snow and wild animals. But three kids? Um, Reddit user Igloo444 explains, The captain told the villagers that he would continue to look into the matter and that he would begin sending some of his men t- in to patrol the streets at night looking for whoever or whatever was the culprit behind the strange disappearances. Later that night, Private Reginald disappeared from the barracks. Disappearing children was one thing, but a grown man... It seemed unlikely that an animal, even a wolf, could have taken down a healthy, full-grown man on its own. Natural, naturally, rumors began to surface that there was some sort of monster living in the mountains that came down at night to feast, feed upon the occupants of the village. Yeah, that sounds like that would be spread. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you had no other way of explaining it, I mean... Remote location, <laughs> check. Yep. Completely isolated via snowstorm, check. Yeah, that's got... So far, everything. Is this the thing? He comes down from the mountain and, and collects who he likes. <laughs> this old dude just walked down with a cane and just told us this creepy story and disappeared behind a tree. Oh, those mountains there? You don't want to go up those mountains there. <laughs> <laughs> Lost my brother up there. The tribe of Wichita Indians ate the eyes out of some foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyway, so they kept doing their nightly patrols. One night, the grandfather and a few other soldiers see a person standing outside the windows of a darkened house, peering into it. They shout for the figure to stay put. Instead, it takes off running. Yeah, of course. Dude, you, you yell someone to stay put. They're never going to stay put. Damn it, didn't listen. <laughs> they, <laughs> gave, <laughs> they gave chase. Eventually, it jumped. Yeah, they used the word it. Eventually, it jumped into a hidden cave and began targeting them. They returned fire, and when the exchange... Wait. Yeah, when the exchange stopped, they investigated and they found Reginald in the cave, deceased, surrounded by seven half-eaten children. What the fuck? Wait, it was, tar- like, shooting at them? They did not say it, but they, they said targeting, and if they're returning fire, I can just imagine that they're getting fired at. Okay. I mean, I... It's like the hills unless, have eyes. Unless some, like, tried to sweep in and it was just... Like picking them off like one by one or something like that. That's fucking weird. I don't know. That's really fucking weird. Yeah, it just sounds like a, a really weird case of like Hills Have Eyes syndrome. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like they're just going out and like, I'm gonna eat this little boy. We know the cave systems. Mm, the yeah. chunky one looks good. <laughs> the chunky one <laughs> feed us much. Feed us much. Where taketh children you? 
Um, cooked cave dinner feast. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yummy, <laughs> yummy, yummy in my tummy. <laughs> like cave paintings of them eating people. Oh my god! Kid goes in pot. Pot of boil water. <laughs> Guys, we found Krampus. Holy shit! Anyway, uh, ghosts have been reported all around the world at pretty much any given point in time. So when you hear about ghosts appearing and apparitions appearing on like wartime battlefields and stuff, it's not too far fetched. Yeah. No, I mean I think well. of, I think of like Civil War specifically. Oh, that actually this is going back around similar times. Uh, 1838, the Alamo. Okay. Yeah, so this is a little bit before. Uh, a few weeks after the Battle of the Anamo. Uh, Anamo. Before they wasted all their ammo. Uh, 1838, the Alamo. A few weeks after the battle, uh, where 200 Texans and 600 Mexicans fought, uh, activity started to appear. General Juan Jose de Andrade received orders from General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana to make sure all of the Alamo's buildings were actually destroyed. Well, he set out just to do just that. However, something, uh, something or some things would end up stopping him. Before they were even able to touch a single building, six monks wielding flaming swords appeared in front of them. Holy shit, this is the fucking guys from, uh, from Game of Thrones. Yeah, they're using blood magic. They're using <laughs> blood magic for these swords. Which, Davos, what are you doing? Can we just say that? That was that, Davos, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm gonna sound like an asshole to any Game of Thrones fans Sir Davos? if I'm wrong. Yeah, that is. Blood magic. Dude, he keeps coming back from the fucking dead. I mean, how badass was it when he fucking One eye? lit his yeah. fucking yeah. sword on fire? Uh, which time? <laughs> I mean, every time. The way he would light his sword on fire was fucking uh, wicked. Uh, anyway. Anyway, <laughs> this is not that uh, heroic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so monks wielding flaming swords. Yes, uh, monks wielding flaming swords. And there were six of them. And um, they were referred to as the Six Diablos, which is the Six Devils. Uh, as you can imagine, General Antonia was a bit frustrated that his men were babbling about ghosts and specters, keeping them from their duties, so he set off to do the deed himself. General Antonia and his men were met with the same Diablos. They gave a warning not to fuck with the buildings, and as all of us would do, Antonia was like, okay, and left. I mean, did they actually say that? Like, hey, don't fuck with this building! It just said that they gave a warning not to, like, do anything to the building, so they were just like, oh shit. I mean, wouldn't you if six devils appeared with flaming swords? And said, don't fuck with this building! Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, sir! And you're like, why? <laughs> you desecrate this building, I cut your fucking head off. Okay! <laughs> we need more men. <laughs> I'm just, I'm gonna go this way. <laughs> <laughs> they just end up making a moat around it. Well, here's my question. Why couldn't they do even touch the building, but Ozzy fucking pissed on it? Oh, man. Oh, no. I mean, Ozzy was on plenty of drugs, so... Yeah, but, like, is, I think that's a little disrespectful. I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, very. the amount of disrespect in that situation is not being argued. I just think if, say, those ghostly specters with flaming swords could have appeared to Ozzy, but he was probably so fucked up that he's like, whoa, man, as he's pissing. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> just, they were just like, dude, this isn't gonna... What are we gonna do? Hey, stop doing that! Hey, what do you? What do you? Stop that! Stop that! Whoa, man! Cool swords. <laughs> We're writing an album about this. <laughs> so yeah, let's let's move on to World War II because this is the the main ingredient of this whole episode. So many strange and horrific things happen in World War II that it seems like a Clive Barker and Stephen King novel. With that said, you can guess that there's an overabundance of things that we'll have to be picking and choosing from. We have a plethora of incidents. Oh boy. Yes. The first one. The S. S. Yeah? Were they super? They're Slytherin. Um, As a Slytherin, I say fuck you for that. The Super Saiyans? Oh, Jesus. You know what? Super Saiyans were badass. The, uh, Do not align the SS with the Super I Saiyans. I was kidding. Okay, that offended me. Well, it's kind of weird that they're good when they go up, like, let's go to our full power. Blonde hair, blue eyes. Just saying. But. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but now that you say that. Fuck. Just like, wow, my childhood is ruined. <laughs> yep, I can't argue that anymore. I gave it a shot. <laughs> Sorry, Goku. <laughs> He's like, well, shit. <laughs> Just lays down and cries. The SS and their indulgence in the occult. Regardless of your religious stance, there is nothing wrong with the occult. Uh, it predates many religions and it is making a comeback in the recent decades. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't darker things out there that can give it, can't give it a bad rap. 
Such as the... Lo- I don't even know how much... I'm gonna, how Longinus you- Spear. Oh, that's how you say it. Okay. The Longinus Spear. The Longinus Spear is supposedly the spear that was stabbed into Jesus during his crucifixion. The one uh, to own and hold the spear would be granted godlike powers. Almost sounds like an Indiana Jones movie. No, it sounds like the fucking Spear of Destiny. Or like Constantine. It is the spear. I was going to say, from Constantine. That's what I was trying to lead through. Yeah. We need Keanu Reeves. Yeah. I'm not too well versed in Constantine. Constantine! Oh, it's so badass. It's so fucking badass. Again, Keanu Reeves, you are a treasure. Well, I mean, you're going off the movie. That's all based on a comic. You know what? I'm just saying, if you want to get the facts or the source. (laughs) 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 Well, fuck you, though. (laughs) Hitler in possession. Was Hitler possessed? (laughs) No! He's just fucking crazy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he's, just, he's just a normal bred psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> he used to be like Mr. Rogers until he started injecting meth and Beasel holy be- bull semen into him. Holy shit. No, I'm kidding. Uh, he was he was always weird. Uh, Hitler in possession. It's hard to think of Hitler other than anything purely evil. However, what if hypothetically, of course, he was possessed? No, I know we're about to lose a lot of listeners here, but th- this is... I, it's not that I believe this. But it's, uh, it's just a thought-provoking thing. This was brought to people's attention when Adolf Hitler's best friend from childhood, August Kubzek, or Kubizek, um, made a comment about the infamous man when he was just 17 years old. One day, Hitler turned to his friend and began talking to him about how he'd like to return Germany to its former glory. A statement that rang like bells to both of them, but the manner in which Hitler spoke seemed like it was a different person inside of him, somehow being poetic enough to truly speak to both... Uh, Hitler himself and the young August. Well, it doesn't end just at a small statement. It's believed that sometime in the 1920s, Ernest Schertl, an author of occultism, had been imprisoned and had uh, had his doctoral degree revoked, amongst other things. And in the mid-1920s, he had sent a copy of his book, Magic, History, Theory, and Practice, written in 1923, to a one and only Hitler. One of the passages that Hitler noted was, and I quote, he who does not have the demonic seed within himself, or within himself, uh, will never give birth to a magical world. So, I don't know about possession and all, but that definitely seems like that could have sparked his interest into the occult, into occultism. I mean, it, he was widely. I don't know where it started for him, but uh, it's just when you when you link these certain things together, and you, you could like, oh well, you're starting to establish some type of stepping stone, but at the same time, like. You're looking. You're you're fucking finding a needle on a haystack of like facts and being like, well, this one kind of works with this. I mean, like, what could be confused for possession just could be unchecked mental illness. He just didn't get his fix of drugs and bull semen that day. Jesus, it's true. Well, I mean, maybe not the fact that he didn't get it, but he was definitely doing it. But I want it now. It's my semen, and I want it now. <laughs> what calm, is he in a fucking commercial? Calm down, Fuhrer. Fuck. So yeah, if he didn't have the demonic seed within himself uh, to give birth, maybe that's why he was taking the semen, the demonic seed, and it was a, 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 of a bull and it had horns. And he's into the occult, occultist things like always had horns and. Tr- I'm sorry, I'm I'm really reaching here, but it just. <laughs> why was he drinking cum? I mean, why was I he can, drinking bull cum? I can understand where you were going with that though. But, I mean, that's some fucked up shit, and, like I said, just could be unchecked mental fucking it, illness. It really could be, and I mean, like, <laughs> I, as, far, as far as I know, these are facts that he actually did do this shit. I mean, it was known that he was a drug addict, but I did keep coming across him drinking bull semen. Really? That, and not necessarily drinking, but it was just like, oh, he did bull semen. I don't know if he was freebasing or what. Freebasing bull cum? Oh my god! <laughs> Oh, oh man, <laughs> I'm getting high yeah. as fuck, man. So he kind of had the thought process of what's his fucking name? Um, Alist- oh my god, Pal- Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley. Oh, he makes an appearance in here too. He's. Just, I am not surprised. He's, he's injecting it. He's just like ride the fucking bull, man. He's like, you know, it'd be a really great energy drink. <laughs> Oh no, that's where Red Bull came from. Oh fuck. Oh, it, it was a secret Nazi experiment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, don't forget that this is. It's theorized that Hitler was one of uh, the Antichrist, is or was one of. Believing, believing that since uh, he was surrounded by evil men, the SS, 
and rallied like-minded people, like in Italy and Japan and so forth, had a combined energy that, when they were at full force, released the energies known as the Antichrist, which in theosophical beliefs and teachings are a force and not a sole person. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I've never heard that one before. That's why Neither I, I kind of stumbled I. on that. I. That's interesting. Yeah, right? It's like... <laughs> Evil. Evil incarnate. Now, here, here's where things start getting really, really fucking interesting, and I'm going to kind of go off on a huge tangent in a minute. According to James Herbert Brennan in his book Occult Reich, Hitler's mentor Dietrich Eckhart, or Dietrich e Eckhart, to whom Hitler dedicates Mein Kampf, wrote to a friend of his in, the, in 1923. And it says, Follow Hitler. He will dance, but it is I who have called the tune. We have given him the means of communication with them. Do not mourn for me. I, I shall have influenced history more than any other German. I found that, that whole thing on Wikipedia. Now, I don't know if that's true or not or where else that could be found, but that was one of the quotes that stuck out to me. Just like, holy shit, that's fucking weird. I'm not going along with the whole like occultism type thing, thinking that he's possessed and how he had that one thing highlighted. Mm -hmm. and means of communication with them specifically to me speaks more to like aliens. Really? When you think occult? Well, well, I mean, he was really into, I mean, the whole Nazi bell. He was really. Oh, into that, that makes it. That makes it like. I'm oh, not. Man, I'm not. Surprised. I went fucking nuts today. There was a documentary that I watched like years back, and some guy, I think from Sweden or Switzerland, claimed to have um, have met the Nords of the sky, and they, like, when he was like younger, they took him like back in time. He was saying that time. Time was of no concept, and he met younger uh, Saddam, and then he met young Hitler. I don't know exactly how... Um, how did those two link up? <laughs> uh, he pretty much, like, like met, like, the world... Like, le high-ranking high yeah. leaders at the time? Yeah. But like, he, the dictators but why, of they, certain they, times. Uh, it's been years. I don't. Really you said Nords like, of the Sky, though. Are those referring to aliens or like yeah, God like yeah. God, no, no, oh, aliens? Uh, the uh, the Nordic race. The, I I don't. Are, are they the Pleiadians? Yeah. Yeah, okay. the Pleiadians. Um, there's quite a few. I know different a races. I know the Pleiadians are like essentially having an intergalactic war with the Argonians. I feel like it's someday I'm going to get in trouble for constantly calling them the Argonians, but I'm going to keep calling them that because it just makes sense. It just fits better. It does. It really does. Like, instead of, like, shape-shifting lizards and shit like that, just Argonians. Yeah, they're the Argonians. Yeah. Why not? Anyway. Yeah, anyway. Uh, but, no, aliens do have a thing to go in here. But as for the, like, the whole, like, things right here, like, means of communication with them, it makes me just automatically think, like, demonic other interdimensional beings or something like that. Because when you, a lot of times when you just think occult, you think, like, demons and other types of, uh, Mythical lore. Well, th well, that's actually funny though too because the Greys have also like been, <clears throat> sorry, been classified as as demons. Yeah, I've heard that too. Because so uh, I mean that could kind of make sense with that, but I mean, who knows? Yeah, you who know. We can, we can get more into that in a minute, because that will lead back into alien-type stuff right now. Yeah. I do want to say, though, technically speaking, the, I mean, occult specifically means anything supernatural, mystical, or magical beliefs, practices, or phenomena. Oh, yeah. So yeah. It, 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 could, it, it could encompass... No, I, just, I just meant for myself. Like, whenever okay. I think of, like, occult or anything like that, it's, my mind instantly goes to, like, what I'm most familiar with, and that's paranormal. As in, like, interdimensional, ghostly-type stuff. Not so much... Aliens. aliens. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think aliens more on like a cosmic scale of things, but either way. Okay, so we're going to move on to something that's a little bit more uh, into the whole mystic side of um, World War II. Okay. And we touched upon this slightly in one of our older episodes uh, during the Destroying of the Mis Misconception series, and that's in the Wicca episode. Ooh. Okay. Um, we briefly talked about Gerald Gardner, um, the founder of... Uh, Gardnerian Wicca, and some of his ties to an old coven back in England. Well, uh, an interesting note here is that Gerald Gardner, the founder of uh, Gardnerian Wicca, had joined a coven that was established in England during World War II. 
It was known as the New Forest Coven, which I don't believe we actually had a name for it back when uh, we originally did it. Uh, I couldn't come across it, and I finally found it. Uh, they took note of the malicious acts headed their way due to the war. Gardner and his new coven took action in, in their own way and performed a ritual to keep the, uh, the dark and evil forces at bay. Uh, basically, to keep Germany and the invading forces out of England. After, all, uh, um, after the fall of France. The ritual went uh, for an extended amount of time, and by the time it was finished, most of the group had been completely drained of their energy. And depending on which source you hear it from, um, someone actually passed away from using all of their energy and stuff. I believe that was actually covered in the, uh, the Wicca episode as well, but uh, I was seeing various different sources cited for this. Mm, okay. So um, I guess it's just hearsay, but it's, it's all basically the same thing, minus that, uh, the, the death of somebody. Anyway, uh, the ritual they used was one that had helped England in the past. The same ritual was used to deter the Spanish Armada from invading when storms scattered their fleet. They became, became discouraged, and they decided not to invade. Again, this happened after the ritual was done in 1805. Napoleon called off his invasion of England. Yeah, Napoleon Bonaparte called off his invasion of England because they did the same fucking ritual. You can chalk this up to being like an actual, actual like cause and effect of said ritual, huh. or you could just be like, oh wow, this is really like, it's a coincidence, you know? Okay. So I, I really don't know which way to, you know. Uh, the Covenant used their magic to supposedly get into Hitler's brain and directed thoughts to him such as, and I quote, you cannot cross the sea. Much to everyone's surprise, even Gardner, it didn't happen. A total of 17 people uh, participated in the ritual, including Masons and people who had ties to, to, to the Golden Dawn. Wow, I stumbled. St yeah. Stutter, 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 stutter. Okay. Gotta get the dick out of my mouth. Okay. Uh, regardless of your stance on magic and the like, it remains as one of those thought-provoking moments in history and makes you wonder if the Nazis still wouldn't have crossed the sea to invade. Um, though some speculate that Gardner's version of the story is an altered version of what some Canadian soldiers did in 1941. Similar execution, but different in a sense. The Canadians dressed as wizards and actually had a Nazi doll in which they projected the ritual at. This was called Operation Mistletoe. Uh, Amato Crowley claims that his father took place in, in this ritual, and one of the very odd things that happened due to this, uh, from what he speculates, is the capture of Rudolf Hess, hmm. who was the, uh, a not Nazi deputy leader, and he was also like one of the head henchmen for Hitler. Yeah, uh, he unexpectedly crossed the North Sea in um, a, in a Messerschmitt fire, fighter plane, believing he could convince England to make peace with Germany. Well, things didn't go as planned, and Hess had to bail out of his plane and parachuted down to Scotland. He had somehow gotten lost and ran out of fuel. After being caught, he spent the rest of his days in prison until his death in 1987. Though, again, there are people such as historians that dis Amato Crowley's claims as nothing more than just a story. Okay. Now let's go on to some uh, horrible, horrible things that could have been made to kill everybody. Like the Tesla death ray. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. boy. Yes. A lot of things are crazy when it comes to World War II. Like, just, like, coincidences, weird shit that happens, and, like... Whether it's straight up horror or just has like weird ties to things that fall into the placement of horror, I just could not let this episode slip by. Oh yeah, uh, which I could, I, I could, we could easily do another episode on the weird shit that came up with this. I literally had to stop typing it out just so that I can come over here. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Maybe we'll return to this someday. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things that we can go into, but uh, the Tesla death ray in 1934, Tesla claimed to have a death beam. That could wipe out entire armies. Now that's fucked up. Though there, <laughs> there was no proof of this. Uh, it was it was a thought provoking statement, one in which the Japanese couldn't let go. The Japanese government gave their scientists one million yen to make this machine. Sinichiro Tomogana, I might be saying that wrong, uh, a future Nobel Prize winner, was part of the project. By the end of the war, they had a legit death ray. No joke. Though here's the thing. It could kill up to about a half a mile away, but the subject had to stand still for nearly 10 mi minutes, making it absolutely useless unless the enemy was, like, sleeping or something. They tested it on rabbits and monkeys as well as uh, marmots. A uh, very, um, let's say, smart scientist took it upon himself to test the ray on himself. 
Uh, he was hit with it for a few seconds and claimed to feel dizzy and fatigued for about 24 hours, but nothing more than that. However, by the end of the war, the machine virtually vanished. Hmm. Oh, fuck. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's not the only thing we probably that virtually have vanished. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. Operation yeah. Paperclip! There were teams that took a lot of shit. They took gold. They took... Historical yeah. documents. They mm-hmm. took fucking everything. They yeah. wiped out so much of history that we will never be able to figure out certain things because of those cunts. Yep. Oh, yeah. Dumb fuckers. Anyway. Uh, what could cause the military to look towards the skies other than kamikazes and P-40 German fighter planes? UFOs! Now we're here. Now we got here. Yep. Woo! Uh, there seemed to be an overabundance of objects in the skies over, well, the whole fucking planet. But they didn't, they didn't call them UFOs. They were classified as Foo Fighters. And no, David Grohl wasn't fighting in World War II. Uh, February 25th, 1942, gave way to the fabled Japanese attack on L.A., which is famously known uh, the Battle for L.A., uh, when series of lights had been seen in an odd formation. The classic photo of the spotlight shining on something ominous in the sky would leave conspiracy theorists wet in their bed. One of the rather mysterious photos that had been ever taken was that of the Nazi bell. It was rumored that the Nazis were working on some very technical things. One was levi- uh, levitation of vehicles and aircrafts. Eventually, a photo found its way around showing what looked like a bell. But this thing also had the, uh, the swastika on it, yeah. and it was much bigger than a bell. It just it looked like, think like the Liberty Bell. The top, like, it went like had this, that look. And then it went it. out. No, yeah. I mean, it was like an actual bell. Oh, no, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, that too. You can find uh, various various uh, photos like on Google and all over the internet of what this actually looked like. I'm not sure if you can actually find the actual photo because tracing these things back and finding finding the validity of everything is rather fucking hard. Yeah, just a bit when it comes to these weird documents and things you're not supposed to know. So forgive me, but uh, it was rumored the Nazis were working on all these uh, levitating things. Now this is a uh, a mixture of lore and personal belief, I guess. The, the photos vanished along with the bell, but some say it re-emerged in, in the U.S. after the war. Operation Paperclip. Yeah, so it wouldn't be surprising considering we took the sciences, so who, uh, why wouldn't we take their discoveries as well? It just makes sense, you know? Yeah. And they put them into Area 51, which everyone is trying to get out. That's, that's what we're trying to get yes. from Area 51. Yeah, there's Super Kyles out there. You gotta watch out for them super Kyles. Yeah, they look like Bane. They're injecting monster now. They're not yeah. just drinking it. They're not satisfied by just drinking their monster. <laughs> they need it in the veins. Yeah, they're gonna run with the uh, the uh, Naruto runners and the Karens, and uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a travesty. Anyway, let's get off of that. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? They might find the the Nazi bell there, but that remains to be seen. So, uh, yeah. There, there's a far-reaching theory that the uh, Roswell incident was actually a Nazi experiment. Possibly the bell or a version of, but I digress. Because I will go off about that for a while. Uh, in 2000, a Polish journal- journalist named Igor Watowski described a Wunderwaffe, which is actually uh, known as a wonder weapon. Uh, and the wonder weapons were the things that were promised to Germany that would just win them the war. Like, th- this is the, the weapon of weapons. We will fucking win. Uh, it's kind of like the rail cannon that they had. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, that, that <laughs> big fucking gun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Wunderwaffe that we're talking about is known as the Deigluck, which is also known as the Bell. was said to be roughly about 12 feet tall and contain a rotating cylinder filled with metallic liquid known as Zerum 525. When activated, this weapon was supposed to create a zone of effect around itself and would cause blood to co- uh, coagulate inside the body and plants to decompose. So as you can imagine, a shit ton of scientists would have died uh, creating this thing. Not a particularly pleasant way to go out, but very metal. Very metal as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what the hell happens if your blood coagulates? Like, all of it. Not just, like, one. This is like, oh, no, it, it, you know, all of a sudden you have a heart attack. But, like, everything. You just kind of, like, jelly and fall over. I'm going to search up some pictures, and I'm probably going to regret it. He's like, I came across the best porn site. Oh my god, coagulated <laughs> You just blood. have to get back. Yeah, you have to get by the coagulated blood first. Guys, uh, don't bother me for the next couple days. You know what you're gonna do? I'm gonna coagulate. I don't know what that means. 
Now, not to delve too much off into like conspiracies, though we already have, there was a theory that FDR, along with other high-ranking officials in the military, not just our own, had made contact with extraterrestrial life, going as far as to make a deal for technology advancements, one to hopefully win the war or future wars. The claimed agreement was that aliens, or extraterrestrial beings, uh, would be allowed to abduct a disclosed amount of people from the Earth in exchange for some of their technologies. Soon after World War II, we started, uh, started research into hovercrafts and the like. Remember, we said the Nazi scientists uh, were now here. So, this could be the reason as to the sudden boom in technology. Of course, to the realist, it was more likely to the fact they would become more intelligent, being forced to make these type of advancements to ensure our own survival. But it does make for an interesting debate, nonetheless. And which race was that? The fucking Greys. But it's said that the Greys are actually just a slave race. I've also heard that they're also just robotic... Yeah. Essentially robotic servants In, um, of someone else. I don't know if they're like the servants of the Argonians. They're servants of Hitler, apparently. Yeah. And, well, um, not, I wouldn't say servants of Hitler, more no, like they were just face. one of the first people that they kind of were doing deals with. In the book and the film Fire in the Sky. That was a good movie. They, uh... Weren't, the, weren't those like spacesuits? Yeah. Yeah. That's all that they were, were suits, but they looked fucking creepy, though, yeah. without them. I mean, it would like, make sense. Humanoid, like... Ugh. I mean, who knows? Yeah, I mean... All I know is that if I see an alien, I'm not. Re pro I'll probably be like, "Whoa!" Taken back by it and shit like that. But like, if I see a swastika on it, I'm fucking out. Yeah. I don't yeah. care that it has other ties to like ancient Egypt and stuff like that. But from what we know in modern society, and if they're watching us, they know how we view that symbol. We're just like alien brethren. They float down from the sky in a fucking ship and then a big fucking swastika's on it like, oh! Never mind. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Shoot. Back it up. <laughs> Shoot. Fuck off, please. Send, send your other aliens. <laughs> other Oh, God. What if they were the nice ones? Can you imagine that? And they still come down with the swastika. That'd be fucking... That would be the worst thing to ever discover. <sighs> it's the serenity symbol. Fuck Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just want to say first and foremost... Hitler was the bad guy. We do not support him. This God. is just our symbol. Guys, we're taking it back. We're taking this back from the Nazis. <laughs> it's like one dude in the crowd's like, fuck yeah! <laughs> fuck yeah, aliens! I mean, that would be a Randall mind fuck. Randall from Clerks. And then they just say, fuck it. And then they kill all of us, like Mar uh, Mars Attacks. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. All you gotta do is get that crazy fucking yodeling song. No, you just need music. Music in general. No, I thought it was, I thought it was specifically that, like, yodeling song. Because it made their heads explode. I don't know. Oh, yeah, just, yeah. Okay, so basically, if you want to protect yourself from aliens, if you are threatened by aliens, just start yodeling. It was a great movie. It was so bad, but it was so good. Ricola has the best commercials after that. Ricola! Just like, yeah, we get rid of your cough and extraterrestrial life. Fuck yeah. Let's do it. Okay, here's a fun one. Let's bring werewolves into the mix. Oh, Why? Oh boy. Because Germany got desperate. <laughs> No, I'm fucking serious. This was a desperate move. If you don't was think it, this is a desperate move, then I don't know what desperate is. Wasn't there didn't wasn't there some kind of program for like werewolf women in the SS? <laughs> Are you talking about She Wolf? What's that? the movie? I was actually talking <laughs> She Wolf of the SS. I was no, I was listening to Rob Zombie's Hellbilly Deluxe too, and that's the werewolf woman of the SS was a song. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Apparently, due to the fact that they were losing the war, and it was the year 1945, Joseph Goebbels, after one failed attempt by someone else, picked up the idea of promoting werewolves on the radio to lure in civilians and the like to fight for Germany and the Nazi regime. Why would that lure people to fight for you? Like I said, wait, it was wait, a desperate move. Wait, like, say... So, how? How did they lure them in? Like, they were, like, saying to, like... Help Join the werewolf them. movement! Join now! Become yeah, a werewolf. Seriously, join the werewolf movement. Yeah. App apparently, this was broadcast towards the end of the war, as every everybody was surrounding. This was a last-ditch effort. It wasn't so much the fact that they were hoping to actually find like a lichen or something of the sort. It was actually a, only three things. One, to bring in more people to fight, fight alongside Germany. Two, to hopefully dissuade Allied troops from advancing. And three, to hopefully buy enough time for a political turning point to favor Germany. Uh, I just can't. I just can't believe that they legitimately were just like, "Hey, 
We have werewolves. Join it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't say one way or another. It was a desperate move, but um, as the war went on, uh, their drastic measures followed, clearly. Uh, it did, however, freak out Allied forces, but it did nothing for the people of Germany besides stoke a new supernatural fear that they hadn't had before. <laughs> it got so out of hand that killings under the guise of werewolf attacks continue, continued into 1947, until Germany started becoming stable again. So people just started killing other people, yeah, saying, yeah, werewolf. Werewolves did it! Werewolves did it! Werewolves bite and rip people apart, they don't stab them! No, it was a werewolf! Stop it, Gerald! You, we Look saw at what you. this werewolf is doing! Anyway, uh, it's rumored Prime Minister Winston Churchill, V for Victory, sign was actually an occult gesture proposed by Agent 666 himself, Aleister Crowley. What? Now he makes an appearance. Yes. Wah, wah, wah. The man who supposedly enlisted Crowley? Agent 007. What? Ian Flemings, the creator of James Bond, wanted to use Aleister Crowley's magic against the SS. To those who believe in those type of things, uh, think he had a role to play in Rudolf Hess's plane mishap. Huh. So 007. It was all guys. It was all 007. It was 007 and Agent 666. <laughs> of course, uh, he had to be like that, but... Um, in one of, I guess in these closing notes that I have, at least, because uh, I kind of powered through most of this. Like I said, I didn't get everything that I wanted to put into this, but we can definitely come back on another episode and kind of go more in-depth about some of the uh, logistics of everything and the finite points of how... Certain things got to where they are, because why the hell did it get to werewolves? Right? That's you know? <laughs> but, yeah. um... What? Werewolves in 007. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, okay, I'm that curious. like such a shitty, like, <laughs> crossover. fucking crossover. <laughs> it really does. And, I mean, I have to, I have to wonder, you know, even Fleming, he... he Allegedly wanted to use Alistair Crowley's magic. So no. what? Did he want to come in his ass or something? Oh. I, I mean, Alistair Crowley was big on sex magic. That's what you mainly focus on when you hear about Crowley. He wasn't all about fucking power bottoming everything. So did Crowley like? No, he was jizz on the plane. Then no, 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 no. He took in magical essence. <laughs> you want to beat the right? Come in me. <laughs> He's just at a bar, drunk, <laughs> trying to pick him up. Yeah. I know how to beat the right. Just how? Picks, picks up his ass. Like a V. He's like, V is for victory. <laughs> what side are you on? <laughs> now come in my ass. <laughs> Take me. Oh my god. <laughs> wow, okay. <sighs> so World War II got weird. Um, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but, no, no, we're just, yeah, um. Wow, you guys really fucking destroyed my train there for a moment. Let's go over the, your final notes. Um, an astounding 70,000 Allied soldiers had gone missing in the war, most of which they conclude were lost in the Pacific, where many islands and vast jungles reside, so who knows how, like, how long it's going to take for people to find this t type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, people are still finding remains from the war over 70 years later. On June 24th, uh, two th I yeah, 2009, yeah, or er, nine, not nine, 19, 2019, <laughs> this year, we're not in the past. So 10 years ago? <laughs> uh, it was reported that a bomb that was dropped in Limburg, Germany back in the 40s had finally detonated in a field. Luckily no one was hurt, but it was a reminder that war, no matter how long ago, will still have drastic effects on our future. Hopefully, it's for the better. Yeah. But war. <laughs> yeah. War <laughs> I didn't. I was gonna have some point, but I, I lost my point. Just stop fucking dropping bombs on everybody. Stop finding in differences in people. Just be like, I hate you for that. Yeah. Like, why do you got to start wars and shit? Hitler, dick. Well, he's dead now, so. Yeah, he's still dick. Yeah, he's been quite arguably one of the bigger dicks in the world. And he took the pussy way out too. Uh, that's that's a whole nother episode. That, yeah, that's a whole nother ball game because uh, there's. An, a well, weird amount of proof that he he did not die. There. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a whole documentary Sorry. that follows that, and if it, he it, did it. it is actually fascinating to go through some of the notes that they have. Like his body was just taken by the Russians, and then like it wasn't really returned. And there, that so that's fascinating. A lot of weird shit. You need to look into that. Even the skull was Stalin's a woman's skull. just like super Hitler. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> he's the one who made out the super Kyles. Oh no! He's like, I have to go to Area 51 to get my body back. You know, you know, this probably could have been stopped if they would have just let Ian Fleming come in Aleister Crowley's ass. <laughs> Why is this a thing? 
Because it is. <laughs> he wanted to use these elephants are of Tim, not from everybody else. I am putting that out there right now. He wanted to, and that's Aleister Crowley's magic. I'm just saying. God yeah. damn it. <laughs> well, what, what did you learn in history class? Oh boy, mom. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh boy. I'm uh, You're glad that I hopped on. One. This episode with you guys. This is this has been a fun uh, this episode fun made journey. Sweaty. <laughs> I am I'm, I am quite sweaty. What is it, thinking about Aleister Crowley's asshole make you sweaty? <laughs> hey, if it can bring down Nazi Germany, it can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Oh, well, shit. Oh. on that note, as always, you can like, subscribe, follow, click that bell, stay notified. Yeah, and uh, we'll. <laughs> Are you still thinking about it? <laughs> Did I throw you off that much? I kind of want to make like a Netflix original about this or something. <laughs> what about 007 and werewolves and Alistair Crowley's asshole? This sounds like a bad DLC for like a GoldenEye game. <laughs> <laughs> Curse of the full moon. With interacting Alistair Crowley and Nazis. With interactive options and Alistair Crowley's asking for you to come in his butt and you're just like, uh No. <laughs> just I keep tapping X, I'm never gonna beat the game. <laughs> yeah, you see the problem with that game is no matter how many times you say no, the only way to win is to, you know, just do it. <laughs> and even after you do it, it just says fail. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we'll we'll see you next week at six o'clock. And if you haven't checked it out yet, um, check us out. Happy birthday, Pat! Yeah, happy birthday, Pat! Ha- happy birthday, Pat! Yeah, yay! Pat's twenty eight now. Yeah, I'm old. I'm Fuck you! I'm in my thirties. Yeah, I'm the youngest of all of us. I'm happy. Yeah. Well, we'll see you later. Later, peoples. Peace. Which is hell?